everyone, I'm Rich Nation. And I'm Mary Kay Grimaldi, and this is Shell Point Today for Thursday, May 14th. On today's show, we'll learn about an academy class on the many years of food. Heather Batty will introduce us to a new podiatrist who's available, and we'll head over to the island to check out the latest from the Stamp Ministry with Melody Desolet. But first, we want to remind you that tomorrow is the outing to the Baker Museum in Naples for the Gods and Heroes Masterpieces from Paris exhibit and tour. This once-in-a-lifetime opportunity to see the exhibit features 150 masterpieces of paintings, drawings, and sculptures that rarely leave France, and they are coming to Southwest Florida. It's an exhibit no art lover should miss. A luncheon on your own will be served following the tour, which costs $37, with court pickups beginning on the island at 8.15. Coming up this Saturday is a shopping excursion to Venetian Bay in Naples. The village on Venetian Bay is a favorite Naples shopping experience for Southwest Florida residents. The boutique-style shops are intriguing to snoop around in, ranging from smart casual to hippie chic, to relax sophisticated and formal fun. Waterfront dining is also available and the restaurants vary as much as the stores. The cost of the trip is $8 with lunch on your own. Court pickups begin at 9.15 on the island. Not only has food changed, but so have the concepts of what we should and should not eat and how much or how little. Al Slickers of the Shell Point Hospitality Department will hold a presentation on Monday about the many years of food as he has focused on the core values of caring for, serving, and satisfying Shell Point residents over the years. Hi everyone, I'm here with somebody you must know, but you're going to get to know a lot better in Coffee with a Neighbor. It's Al Slickers, Director of Hospitality. Thanks for joining me, Al. Sure. Glad to be here. I, I love talking with you when we were waiting for the employee Christmas um, lunch to start. And we were talking about food at Shell Point. And it occurred to me that having been here almost 30 years, you've seen it all. I've seen a lot anyway. I don't know if I've seen it all, but I've seen a lot. <laughs> so you started 30 years ago and you came right in as a director of dining services. Yes, I came here May 5th, 1986, on Sunday afternoon, and um, I've been going strong ever since. Well, I think I have been anyway. <laughs> we think so, too. What was going on in 1986 when you came here? How many eating venues were there? There was a pavilion? and Well, in 1986, I was pr predominantly responsible for the Crystal Dining Room at that point in time. The Crystal Dining Room was the flagship, was really the only location for independent people to eat at that point in time. The pavilion was here, but obviously strictly healthcare, sure. dining, and a whole different venue, a whole different situation. But um, the Crystal Dining Room was for all of Shell Point residents and also their guests. Mm -hmm. The King's Crown wasn't even built at that, at that point in time, so the people that were potential residents of King's Crown were even eating in the Crystal Dining Room. <laughs> We were probably serving over 100,000 meals, 120,000 meals a year out of the Crystal Dining Room at that point in time. There were meal plans available where people were eating um, either 10 meals a month up to 90 meals a month. So the, the volume was much greater. And, and now we don't have those meal plans. We have the optional passport meal plan that makes, sure. it, makes it different than what it was 30 years ago. A little more institutional in those days. It was just basically a place where people came to eat because they had to eat. Uh -huh. And now dining is being an option. It's, it's really about the desire of when, when and where people want to eat. You know, that's an interesting point. That's a point that fascinates me because this, in the 15 years I've been here, Shell Point has changed so dramatically. Tremendously. And it's grown so much. And I think you are catering to people from a skilled nursing facility to three assisted living facilities to independent living at the Crystal and at the Palm Grill and the Island Cafe and the Woodlands Cafe. Right. I mean, that's a huge amount of variety. How do you even think, how do you think about that? How do you think about uh, it? A little bit of the time, basically, uh -huh. um, take it in piecemeal. But mm -hmm. actually, Shell Point is a microcosm of the food service industry. As you say, it's from the institutional side uh -huh. to the, the gourmet side and everything in between, and when people want to eat and the demand of when people want to eat. And I think the other thing that's interesting is the expertise of, of our residents and, and the guest eat at Shell Point 
in the past it was basically people came to eat just to eat uh -huh. and for, for basic nutrition. Now everybody's an expert, everybody's a chef, yeah. and everybody is, ver is um, let's say that they critique dining services sure. from, from, from their perspective. So the that's taste, changed. The texture, how it looks, you know, everything. Uh, yeah, whether it's uh, allergies or sure. gluten-free or diet, the, the diets have changed. Um, there was South Beach, there was um, Atkins. Atkins, and now it's, you know, different <laughs> diets today, gluten-free. Whole food. Yeah, the, the fads come and go pr pretty quickly. I could tell you a lot of stories about fads here. Uh, blue br brand muffins were, were the big thing at one time where Brand muffins was supposed to be the healthiest thing for you, for your digestive tract and for, for your longevity. And we could not get enough brand muffins in here. We, we were making brand muffins um, <laughs> literally by the dozens. And then one day a, an article came out about, well, brand muffins may not be so good for you. And then all of a sudden we had thousands of brand muffins piled <laughs> up in the kitchen. So we, we moved on to the next, to the next issue, whatever that was, meat-free diets or peanut-free diets or milk-free oh. diets. So there, there's a lot of fads that have occurred over the years. And then you throw in the holidays. And food, really, we all know, is a very important component of our holidays. Well, well food is culture, and culture is food, and sure. we're defined by what we eat, and our culture is defined by food. Mm -hmm. So where you come from, your background, where you were raised. I, I know even in my own family, you know, my, my one grandmother was English, and food wasn't as important to the English people, but on the other side, my, my, my grandparents were German, Polish, and food food was a tradition yeah. at, at holidays. So it, it just depends on, on your background also, your perspective right. of food. And it provides so much food, the meal, getting together, the sustenance of it. I know when we ask residents to help feed, to, to be dining companions in our pavilion so that everybody, you know, having a meal, ha our goal is to have somebody with everybody having a meal. That's how important it is you know, to have a pleasant meal experience across the spectrum. Right. Right. Well, a, a big part of, of, of food is the social interaction sure. also. And come, it's not just to come to eat at the Crystal Dining Room or to eat at one of the dining rooms at the ALF or the skill care facility. Mm -hmm. It's that social interaction with yeah. other people because that's, that's a healthy component of, of dining as well. And quite frankly, everything we do at Shell Point, if, if, if two people get together, there's got to be food for that meeting to, <laughs> to, for two people to get together. There's got to be cookies and punch or coffee and cake for, for, for any event that, that occurs here. Very exciting. Well, that reminds me, this is coffee with the neighbors, so we'll have some coffee when you come to spend some time. Coffee made in the Palm Grill, and we'll probably have a cookie um, to sweeten the talk, but we won't need it because this is going to be a great opportunity for you to spend some time getting to know Al a little bit better and hearing the story of his many years of food at Shell Point. Won't you join us? Our feet are very important to us. They serve us well to take us where we want to go, and like the rest of our body, they need to be properly cared for and healthy. Heather Batty of Resort Services wants you to know there's a new podiatrist available this summer, and she'd like to introduce him to you now. Hi, I'm Heather Batty from Resort Services. Today I'm here with podiatrist Dr. Dushak. Dr. Dushak, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself? Um, I'm relatively new to the Fort Myers area, okay. but uh, I practiced in Naples for the past two to three years. Uh, previous to that, I'm from the Pittsburgh area where I did most of my training. Mm -hmm. um, I got an opportunity recently to join up with Dr. David Gavin, who's been coming here for some time, and uh, it gives him the opportunity to do some of the things that he'd rather do, and uh, I'm getting the opportunity to come here and spend time with uh, some of your some of the residents, residents here. Residents, yes. Okay. So where will your office actually be? Where will you be having your hours? My office here mm -hmm. is actually at the Arbor. I'm at the Arbor every Tuesday afternoon, uh, which can be extended to days, but it's a full every Tuesday. And I also have an office in the pavilion okay. um, that I can see patients as well. And, you know, if patients wish to see me, I can find a way to find them. Oh, good. Okay, perfect. What are some of the things that our residents would come and see you about? Well, you know, the most basic things that uh, I see most of the residents here have uh, is basic nail care, which is the bread and butter of podiatry, mm -hmm. and can also be very problematic for a lot of uh, a lot of your um, people here because they have trouble getting down to uh, that area to take care of themselves. So, I'm more than happy to help out in that manner. Mm -hmm. But I also treat uh, 
every element and every aspect of the foot and ankle from surgical, uh, uh, any surgical procedure all the way to uh, dermal problems mm -hmm. and, uh, and as basic as the nails, like I said. So anything that you have a problem with that's hurting you, looks bad, mm -hmm. looks unusual, changed from some time earlier, I can fix it. Okay. What is your practice then called? It, my practice is Apex Foot and Ankle Center, and I know that's a big uh, set of words, but it used to be Palm Podiatry. Okay. Uh, and when I joined up with Dr. Gavin, we renamed it and restructured the, the practice. Oh, great. Well, perfect. We're glad to have you here. Mm -hmm. How will the residents um, get in touch with you? Well, they can call me at the office anytime. Okay. It's 239-433-0064. Uh, okay. And if nobody, if nobody answers, we can always leave a message, but we have during the week from 8.30 to 5.30, there was always somebody in the office. Perfect. And we're very close by. It's a mile from here. Okay. So if you need to see a podiatrist, make sure you try to get a hold of Dr. Dushak. He can see you at either the pavilion or at the arbor. Thanks, and have a healthy and happy day. And now let's head over to the Island Tunnel where Melody Desolet is finding out what the stamp ministry is all about and how you can get involved with this important fundraiser. Hi, Shell Point. I'm Melody Desolet, a volunteer coordinator, and I am down in the stamp ministry, and I have an exciting opportunity for you all to consider as a volunteer. Now, the reason I'm down here is because of this little uh, publication. It's called Guideposts, and this particular magazine came out January of 2014. And the reason I'm introducing that to you is because we had a Shell Point resident who wrote a letter on behalf of the stamp ministry to the Guidepost magazine. While it was published, which is wonderful, but as a result, we have gotten an influx of stamps sent to the ministry from the United States and Canada. And I'm joined by a leader, Treva Crump from Genonia, and she will give us an example of a box that was shipped to the ministry from the United States. Oh, the so Treva, can you explain to us what we're looking at here? Uh, the stamps have arrived and they have already been trimmed. It's just that we need to sort them into the categories uh, that will allow the dealers to purchase the stamps that they're wanting. So all of these stamps need to be sorted uh, according to their size and uh, what the picture is. And it's uh, quite easy. We have four major categories of uh, love, common, Christmas, and commemorative and most of our stamps fall into those categories. Okay, so this is just one box yes. that has been shipped, which we receive quite a few boxes per week, is that correct? Every Tuesday and Friday morning, we receive uh, mail, uh, as the stamp room is officially open Tuesday and Friday morning. And these boxes arrive, and uh, many of them come from churches and organizations, but they're always filled with stamps. And we're thrilled when they're trimmed. We're even more thrilled when they're sorted. Uh, but sometimes we get stamps that need to be trimmed. Okay, so now we're going to head over to a different section of the stamp ministry room. And Treva is here to show us this, as we were explaining earlier, is an influx of stamps that we receive generously from those who donate them to the ministry. Uh, some are sorted and yes. some, some are not. Some need to be trimmed. They come with extra paper on them. Our dealers are willing to pay for the stamps, but they don't want to pay for the extra paper. So they, we're having our volunteers trim so that there's a quarter of an inch to a third of an inch of paper around the stamp, which protects it. So in looking at these bins, how many pounds of stamps would you assume is in this bin here? I think this is about 60 pounds of stamps. Wow. So that equates to a lot of volunteer work and a lot of help that we're looking for temporarily to get through these bins that of course need to be trimmed in this case and sorted in this case. Now. Treva, I'm assuming it's simple to trim once I know the dimensions. Can you show me? And I'm actually going to trim a stamp oh, for the first time Melody, on SPTV. You, you will be good at it, I'm sure. <laughs> Let's take a fun one. Is All there right. a 
A colorful? Yes, we okay. have some here. Looks like we have Christmas stamps and we'll come over here. This is where our volunteers sit. normally sit down to trim the stamps. Okay. Melody, if you take your scissors and make sure they're comfortable in your hand and trim it so that we have a quarter of an inch around the stamp. Uh, sometimes the stamps are so close to the edge of the paper that you can't trim them and that's fine, but uh, work on the other sides. And there it is, a perfectly trimmed stamp and it would go right into that box for Christmas. Now, with that practice, I want you yeah. to do these two as well. <laughs> Now, in the case where the edge is pretty close, that doesn't matter. We can just well, trim around it. Well, you still work on a quarter of an inch if you can get that. Oh, that's looking good. And that would be yes. a Christmas as and well. And there's another Christmas. Now, the paper is shy on one side, so we just make the other three sides a quarter of an inch. There you go, and we'll leave that. That's good. <laughs> <laughs> and we will put that in Christmas. <laughs> there you go. Okay, so that was my debut of trimming stamps in the stamp ministry. It seemed pretty foolproof, and it was fun to be instructed to do so. And in this case, they were all Christmas stamps, but we also, as these bins indicate, we have love, we have common stamps, Christmas, and commemorative. So if you are willing to join this wonderful ministry, we'd love to have your help. Now this is temporary until we get through this influx of stamps that have been shipped to the ministry. Now I am joined by Ben Crump, who is Treva's husband. They're both the leaders of the stamp ministry. And I am so thankful that you and Treva didn't hand me this big tub to cut and sort through. But Ben, can you give us a little summary? What is the stamp ministry for those who may not know about it? The stamp ministry, the, all of our money goes to a printing house in Buenos Aires, Argentina, that prints Christian literature for Sunday schools. And that comes to all, the, the literature is for a number of countries, Spanish-speaking countries. Some of it even comes back to Spanish-speaking groups here in the United States. So we really need volunteers here, and uh, it's not all, even though it was originally called the Alliance Women's Stamp Ministry, we've now dropped the women's name because we have a number of men who are working in here, and we appreciate women, men and women as volunteers. Wonderful. So this is what Ben was referring to. This was over time, and as he stated last calendar year, they contributed $41,000. So this group is not a stamp collection agency. It's more of a stamp resale ministry. So if you'd like to be a part of this wonderful group, you can do so by volunteering and contacting me. My telephone number is 454-2290. The stamp ministry is open Tuesday and Friday mornings from 8.15 until noon. And they also have a new day opening May 14th. It's Thursdays from 2 p.m. to 5 p.m. So be sure to come out, help trim, help sort, and let's get through these tubs together. Thank you for joining me. And now it's time for all the latest happenings, Academy news, menus, and Village Church connections. Welcome to the happening segment of Shell Point TV. I'm Bev Chandley, and this is Caitlin Vanskoy, and we're going to tell you about today's activities here at Shell Point. We're going to start bright and early at 7.15 with the Health Connections class, Bend, Breathe, and Balance. That's down in the health club on the island. We have an 8 o'clock Men's Golf Association. That'll be at the Shell Point Golf Club. We also have 8 o'clock Pickleball at the Pickleball Courts. And we have round robin doubles tennis at the tennis courts, also at 8 o'clock. Now at 8.30, the Paddlers Club will be gathering at the kayak storage for their weekly outing. And at 9 o'clock, Samba, the card game, will be in the sable room of the Woodlands. And at 9.15, shuffleboard will be played at the shuffleboard courts. 9.30, we have current events in the game room of the Woodlands. At 9.30, we have ladies match play tennis at the Woodlands tennis courts. We're going to switch to beginning line dancing. We have that at 9.45 down in the health club. And from 10 to 12, you can tour the photo gallery and studio down in the tunnel. 
At 10.15, we have basic line dancing in the health club. And the poetry group will be in the art studio at 10.15. And then we have another 10.15 activity, and it's solar observing. That's in the Osprey Room on the island. Our Suzy Q heads to Rum Runners today. Sign up is required for those trips, and that leaves at 11 o'clock. Now here's Caitlin to tell you about the afternoon activities. Thanks, Bev. Our first afternoon activity is Mahjong at 1245 in the library lounge. And at 2 o'clock, we have a special event. It's called Get the Sweet Scoop on the Larson Pavilion. From 2 to 4, the photo gallery and studio will be open for viewing. That's down in the island tunnel. And at 245, a health connections class, Balance and Mobility Training Level 2 in the health club. And that's currently full. 4 o'clock, the seamstress will be here for her weekly service in the Osprey Room. And at 4.30, we have the Alcoholics Anonymous meeting in the Sable Room of the Woodlands. 6.30 is the time for Pinochle in the Library Lounge. And our last activity of the day is at 7 o'clock with the Trailblazers Bible Study in the Game Room of the Woodlands. Well, thanks so much for joining us. We'll see you right back here tomorrow. Hi, I'm Terry Colette with your Academy Information for Thursday. At 9.15, Windows 8.1, Coaching and Fundamentals, continues in the Technology Teaching Center on the island. At 1 o'clock, Art and the Aging Brain will take place in the Grand Cypress Room of the Woodlands for those who have signed up. Menus for Thursday. In the Crystal Room, the Crystal Platter is pork tenderloin with escalloped apples and grilled vegetables. The dinner special is the Crystal Carving Board for $13.95, and the soup of the day is beef rice. In the Island Cafe for lunch, the special is a turkey, Swiss, and bacon panini with fresh fruit for $7.25. The dinner special is Thai night for $8.25. Dinner specials in the Palm Grill are ribeye for $19.95 or cod a la neige for $17.95. Um, and these are available 24 hours a day at www.shellpoint.net. My name is Janice Quinlan and I have been serving with the Village Church since August as your international worker in residence. Many of you know that I spent five weeks speaking in New England in late winter, and today I would like to share with you a highlight from my trip. I was born in Connecticut. Whenever I am back there, I make it a personal goal to visit Mountain Grove Cemetery in Bridgeport, Connecticut. Someone special whom I have never met is buried there. I have visited her graveside dozens of times just to clean around the stone, leave flowers, or just visit for a while. The first stone we visit is that of Phineas Taylor Barnum. You probably remember him from the circus. P.T. Barnum was an author, publisher, philanthropist, and politician. When you look at P.T. Barnum's personal marker, there is barely visible on the front of the stone these words, not my will, but thine be done. You cross the simple cemetery road to the gravesite of Charles Sherwood Stratton, better known as General Tom Thumb. Tom Thumb became famous in P.T. Barnum Circus. In his adult life, Stratton was only about two feet, nine inches tall. P.T. Barnum purchased a life-size statue of General Tom Thumb and placed it as a gravestone at Mountain Grove. The two are buried a stone throws away from each other, two men who left their mark entertaining crowds in what was the greatest show on earth in its day. Then we walk a short distance to the spot which holds the remains of one of the most prolific hymn writers in history, writing over 8,000 hymns and gospel songs. She also wrote and published over 1,000 poems. Frances Jane Crosby is who brings me back to Mountain Grove again and again. As an infant, Fanny caught a cold and mustard poultices were applied to treat the discharges from her eyes. She believed the procedure damaged the optic nerves. Just before her 15th birthday, Crosby enrolled in the New York Institution for the Blind and there learned to play the piano, organ, harp, and guitar. She later joined the teaching faculty there. Some of Fanny's best known songs include Pass Me Not, O Gentle Savior, Blessed Assurance, 
Praise him, praise him. Rescue the perishing. To God be the glory. While Fanny will probably always be known for her hymns, she wanted to be seen primarily as a rescue mission worker. She worked for decades in many of the New York City missions. She chose to live in such areas of Manhattan as Hell's Kitchen, the Bowery, and the Tenderloin. She was aware of the great needs of the immigrants and the urban poor. She often gave the $2 fee, which she received from her publishers for writing one of her hymns, to her work with the poor. Fanny spent the last decade of her life in Bridgeport, Connecticut. She died there in 1915 at the age of 94. Her home in Bridgeport is now the men's home of the Bridgeport Gospel Mission. Fanny Crosby's stone bears her name. On the front is inscribed these humble words, she hath done what she could. The smallest of headstones for a giant of a woman of faith. Decades after her death, a new gravestone was dedicated, just close to her original stone by Crosby's friends to whom her life had been an inspiration. It contains the first stanza of the hymn, Blessed Assurance. Fanny may not have a big expensive plot like P.T. Barnum or a huge monument with a life-size statue as General Tom Thumb does, but Fanny Crosby, the blind hymn writer, has profoundly blessed the church with her 8,000 hymns, and yes, she hath done what she could. Well done, good and faithful servant. Your hymns continue to bless the church a hundred years after you've left us. On behalf of the Village Church, may you be inspired by the life of this woman of faith. Thank you. Thanks for joining us here today. Return again tomorrow when we'll find out about the thrift store collections happening at the Estuary and Eagles Preserve, as well as the upcoming Lobster Bake. Until then, this has been Shell Point Today for Thursday, May 14th. I'm Mary Kay Grimaldi. And I'm Rich Nation. We hope you have a wonderful rest of your day, and we'll see you back again here tomorrow.